Hi, welcome back to What's Up Doc. I'm Dr. Michael Cohen. I'm a family medicine specialist. Today I want to speak about omega-3 fatty acids. Why do I want to speak about them? You've probably heard about them. They come from sources such as deep water fish and also from very specific types of seaweed. These are essential acids in the fact in the in the sense that we can't produce them ourselves by our body so we have to get them in from the outside environment and they come in different forms and I'm going to go into those details in a moment but the first thing I want to tell you about is why I want to talk about this. I have many different patients with many different problems and I'm always trying to find out what can work to help people without using regular medications for the simple fact that medications tend to have more side effects and or unwanted effects I should say. The reason I want to talk about omega-3 then is because there are quite a lot of good results being reported in the literature and yet I feel that they're not this is not something very much in the awareness of both patients and doctors and if it is it's just by the way oh yes I take some omega-3 but nobody's really looking at how beneficial they can be on a wide scale. Let me tell you a couple of stories about some of the uh, patients that I have that have uh, driven me towards looking into them more and towards prescribing them more. Right now I can think of a patient who has attention deficit disorder and he was taking quite high doses of a stimulant substance, an amphetamine, which can have quite significant side effects on heart rate, on um, by increasing the pulse, so causing palpitations, causing anxiety, sleep disturbances, mood disturbances, um, a loss of appetite, even weight loss. And um, so I decided to try and figure out whether omega-3 fatty acids could be helpful to him because there is research to suggest that it might. Now, what I did is I checked his uh, blood test, uh, did a blood test on him to check his level. I uh, found it was quite low, and then we started supplementing him with a very high quality sub supplement. And the result of this three months later was that he reduced the dose of his stimulant medication by about a half, which is very significant and I thought worthy of mention. Another patient I can think of has a uh, skin condition that's quite severe called psoriasis and he's actually been on a biological medication which means a immunosuppressive type of medication that can have risks including cancer in the long term and he's been on this for about two years. We checked his omega-3 levels, they were low and we supplemented and the result of of this supplementation in his particular case was that he could actually come off, completely come off, the biological agent that he was being treated with and his psoriasis has been maintained at a, uh, let's say, at, at a calm level, meaning it's not bothering him too much and it doesn't require him to take quite significant medications that can have severe side effects. So this is where it's piqued my interest. So what exactly are omega-3 fatty acids? These are um, compounds in the body that can't really be produced by the body, so they have to be taken in, but they're essential for our health. They're essential for the composition of our cell membranes. They create uh, increased fluidity of the cell membranes. They are essential for the reduction of inflammation. There are three main types of omega-3 fatty acids. ALA, DHA, and EPA. I'm not going to go into great detail, but just to say ALA is a form that's derived from plants in general, um, chia seeds, sage, uh, walnuts, uh, and um, this form can be converted into the other two, which are DHA and EPA, but the body is not very good at converting them. And actually, as we age, it becomes even less good. So the main sources for EPA and DHA should be coming from um, food substances themselves. The food substances are either specific types of seaweeds or certain fish. The fish in general, so that you know, that have the, the, the most um, of these substances are salmon, uh, sardines, mackerel, anchovies, and one other, herring. 
So how come we even need to be thinking about taking supplements? Well, if we look back historically, evolutionarily, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the ratios of the types of omega-3 in our diet used to be very different. Um, there's uh, omega-3, which is, let's say, a healthier form of the essential fatty acids, and omega-6, which we'll say is the less healthy form. And the ratio has changed quite dramatically over the years. So at the current, uh, at the current point, we're seeing ratios in a Western diet of around um, uh, 10 times less, or t even up to 20 times less, um, in favor of the beneficial type, the omega-3. Now, the result of this is that we are seeing a lot more um, of inflammatory types of diseases. And the aim of trying to restore the balance is to actually reduce inflammation in the body, to improve hormonal function, to improve what's called um, cell membrane fluidity, which allows the transport of various hormones and proteins across the cell membranes and therefore results in better outcomes in a number of different clinical measures. One of the major diseases that is affected by the ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 is cardiovascular or heart disease. Now, it's, there, there are some uh, significant numbers of studies that show that having good levels of omega-3 in relation to omega-6 can quite dramatically remove uh, or reduce the, um, the risk of uh, heart disease. Um, resulting in significant clinical outcomes. So there was a study recently called Reduce It, and this study um, showed quite clearly that there was a very significant absolute reduction, not a relative reduction, but an absolute reduction in, in uh, cardiovascular events, including cardiovascular death. So I'm sure you've all heard about statins. These are medications that are very popular and a lot of research and money has gone into their use in the last 20 to 30 years. Many, many people around the world are taking them and the idea of their use is to um, alter the lipid profiles, the, uh, let's say, the fats and um, uh, proteins that are thought to be responsible for heart disease in part. So these medications have a place in uh, the prevention or treatment of heart disease, but you actually need to use quite large numbers of patients in order to prevent one event. And we're looking at numbers like over 100 people being treated with a statin for five years in, e in order to reduce, um, to, to, to prevent one heart attack. Conversely, or interestingly, there are studies of omega-3 being used for similar purposes and with much lower numbers of people needed to treat. So I think it really does beg a question as to what's going on here and why are we not focusing our efforts more on omega-3s which actually have a lot of other good benefits and opposed to statins which actually do have some fairly significant side effects. There are also other studies which I'll show in the links below that, that, re, that show a reduction in inflammation, um, in markers of inflammation, IL-6, CRP, TNF-alpha, um, and also improvements in diseases which are very inflammatory in their components, such as rheumatoid arthritis, which is quite a debilitating joint disease that not too few people suffer from. You remember earlier in this video that I was speaking about attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. Many people suffer from this and um, people involved, the people involved are actually often children at the earlier stages and uh, going into adolescence and also many adults who have either not been diagnosed when they were younger or who've developed it later on in life. The use of omega-3 for, for this condition or range of conditions, I should say, is actually very interesting. Omega-3 fatty acids, when given in significant doses, can actually improve membrane fluidity, which means that the cell membranes are more 
um, they're more fluid-like, and that allows uh, an improvement in neurotransmission, which means the transmission of signals across neurons, which are the building blocks of the brain and the nervous system. So this allows improved um, uh, signaling pathways and therefore improves the ability of the brain to change its pathways, um, a process known as neuroplasticity that I'm sure we'll discuss in a future video. There are studies that show that ADHD can be improved with the use of omega-3 fatty acids. And in addition to other modalities of care, I think that there's definitely a case for trying to use them much more than we already do. I'm not saying that people don't need medications of various types. There are stimulant medications for people with severe ADHD. But if I was to try and build a program to help a young person, my first inclination would not be to jump to putting them on a medication which stimulates their brain and which has a whole raft of other side effects. But much, I would much prefer to think, what else can I do for this person first as a baseline? Improve their basic physiology. So one of those things would be to give them omega-3 fatty acids at the right doses to test their levels before, to test their levels afterwards. And there are some good blood tests that can be used for this that can measure the omega-3 level over a three-month period by looking at the red cell membrane content because red cells in the blood last for up to 120 days. And therefore, by measuring the level in the red cells, you're actually getting an average level rather than looking at a plasma level, which just tells you what their omega-3 status is right now today. So by measuring these levels and then by working out a dose to give to these young people, we can see three months later what they've achieved and we can also see how they're doing from a neuropsychosocial level. So by measuring the level after three months and also by um, uh, measuring them neurocognitively, we can see how a person is doing, uh, a child or an adolescent or an adult, and we can work out if they're being helped through this treatment. And you need to remember that these treatments take time. They're not things that will work overnight. And we're not talking about the use of strong medication. We're talking about the use of, um, of supplements which can improve the basic physiology of the body, and in particular, in this case, the brain. There are studies that show that giving good doses of omega-3 can significantly impact the development of um, Alzheimer's, especially when given at an early stage, at a stage when uh, there's what's called mild cognitive impairment. So we're not talking about full-blown Alzheimer's, but we're talking about things in its earliest stages when there are some evidence of memory loss um, or other forms of global cognitive impairment. Um, and again, this should be one of the basics. We shouldn't be um, waiting to try these supplements at a later stage. We should be trying them as soon as possible and doing them in a scientific way. I recently did a video which speaks exactly about the prevention of dementia. And I'm going to post a link to that. So have a look down below for that. So in summary, the reason why I spoke about omega-3 fatty acids today is because, as you can see, they are related to so many different disease processes and the prevention of these diseases as well. I always think it's better to prevent rather than cure, and therefore I'm always searching for underlying mechanisms of disease and treating basic physiology to support the human body, the human mind, in order to heal by itself or to prevent its decline. In terms of the types of omega-3 that I would advise anyone to take, first of all, it should only be done having discussed with your doctor because there can be side effects and because they're not suitable for everybody. And obviously, depending on which doses are planned to be given, the supplements are, they should be ones which are very pure. So they've been, um, they've had their contaminants taken out. 
They ideally should be coming from sustainable fish populations. And there are companies that focus on doing this. Uh, and the other thing that's very important is that they should be refrigerated. And this is in order to prevent them becoming oxidized. The oxidization of these substances actually renders them useless and sometimes can actually make them actually somewhat dangerous. So I, I do suggest that you read more on this subject, that you educate yourself, you think about whether this is something that could help you. And if you do think it's something that could help you, that you discuss with your doctor when you next see them. Thank you for watching today and I look forward to seeing you soon again on What's Up Doc.